In the last two videos, we have seen the software control operation of the ADC inside LPC2378 microcontroller. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss the burst mode operation of the ADC. So let me repeat, if you are using software control mode, you can enable only one channel at a time. And if you want to have multiple channels enabled at the same time, that means more than one bit in this uh, cell register field is set to one. Under that case, you will have to use the burst mode. That means you will set this bit to one. Okay, even if you are enabling multiple channel at the same time, at a given instance, the conversion will be happening only on one channel because physically there is only one ADC and it will be used in a time multiplex manner. Okay, so what you have to do is you need to set the burst bit to one. The start field, which are used for software control mode, it should be all set to zero, 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 basically means no conversion. And this clock S field, that will basically decide the trade-off between conversion time and accuracy of your result. In software control mode, ADC always takes 11 clock cycles for one unlocked digital conversion. But in burst mode, uh, you can control it by setting appropriate values in CLKS. So by default, uh, they are zero. That means it will take 11 clock cycles. Now, if you set it to 001, it will take only 10 clock cycles, but the result it will be accurate only up to 9 bits. So we have 10 bit ADC. The result will be accurate only up to 9 bit. That means the least significant bit may or may not be correct. If you set it to 010, conversion will take only 9 clock cycles, but the lower two bits, uh, they may be incorrect. Okay. So like that, you can have a trade-off between accuracy as well as conversion time. So basically, uh, this is the only difference. Otherwise, everything else is same. So what I will do is I will start with the same code which we use for software control hardware triggered mode and I will start from there. Before that, I just wanted to show you like in software control mode, you can have only one channel activated time. So inside the control register, you can see now it is one. That means only one channel is enabled. Let me make it three. Like now two channels are enabled and let's run it now. And when I run it now, now you can see cell is three. That means two channels are enabled. And when you run it, okay, so you will see done is happening only on channel zero. Although I haven't connected the pin to the external pin, uh, it should still make done signal high if any conversion is happening on channel uh, 1 here. This one, ADC row DR1, you'll notice that that done will never become high because we are in software control, so he'll be doing conversion only on one of the channels, which is channel 0, since it is set. Okay, so now let me copy this code uh, to a new source file, and we'll start editing there. And let me save it as okay, ADC underscore burst because we are in burst mode. So here you do not have any external triggering for starting the conversion. It will be in something called as a hardware scan mode. So he will start conversion from the least significant bit in the cell register field, which is set to one. Once the conversion is over, he will move to the next channel, so on and so forth. So this timer configuration, uh, it doesn't make sense in burst mode. Are your direction? Okay, this was for displaying the output. So we can keep that one. P con P, again, we need to enable it. Pin cell 1. This is for configuring the input to the ADC. So now my plan is to use two channels uh, at the same time. So I'm going to enable AD 0.1 also. In that case, yes, this we need to change. So this bit will be C, C3, FFF, and this will be one. So that two pins are configured. Now we don't need this timer and roll. The control register, okay, let's configure it. Interrupt enable, I'm enabling in interrupt on both channels. So let me say three there. So for control register, we need to look the values. So we need to enable two channels. So these two, I will make one, all of them zero, burst bit to one, 
this to zero, I will still operate at 11 clock cycles per conversion. This bit to one, all of them zero, this don't care, but we'll still keep it as uh, zero. So altogether, our control register value will be 21, okay, it will be 210003. That will be the control register value based on or what we require. Now this while loop, okay, previously we were just waiting for one bit to set, uh, which is like channel zero. Now that is not the case. Okay, so you can have conversion either on channel zero or channel one. So what we can do, we can just wait for any interrupt to happen. So if you come to your ADC status register, you can see there is one bit per channel. I am checking like if any of the bits are set. So bits will be set in the done field if conversion is over. It will set in overrun field if any overrun error happens. So in both cases, we are supposed to get interrupt. So what I will do, I will simply wait for any bit in that status register to set. So I will say like while not AD0 status. That means some bit changed. Once any bit changes, I will check why it changed. So the only condition I am interested is the done field. If there is an overrun error, uh, I can't do anything, okay. but it will set. But I am only going to look at the done field. So first let me check whether conversion on channel one happened. Maybe that's why the status bit changed. So I will check only for bit zero. So I will add it with zero x uh, one so that I get the rightmost bit. Uh, if that is the case, that means conversion on channel zero is over. So I can send that data to my external pin. So let's use the same ports here for channel zero. So converted data, okay, voltage, temperature, IO pin, everything same. Now, maybe I got interrupt where there is conversion over on channel two, okay? So one thing to notice here is you should not write else if because it is possible both of them finish conversion at the same time. So if you write else, if first he will check whether channel one conversion is over. If it is uh, done, he will not check for channel two. That you should not do. So whenever you get an intro, uh, whenever the status register changes, you need to check whether it finished conversion on channel one as well as whether it's finished on channel two, because it's possible like both of them finished at the uh, same time also. So. I need to check whether the second bit here is set. So we will add it with two just to get the second bit. And we will right shift it by one position uh, so that the overall value becomes just one. Okay. Again, that's a standard practice. In that case, okay, now my assumption is I have two channels, I have two sensors, uh, identical sensors connected to these two channels. And in one case, I will send the output to port 1. In the other case, I will send it to port 2. So all these equations will remain same. But instead of pin 1, I'm going to use port 2. So we have to, of course, use FIO because port 2 supports only fast uh, IO. So we need to configure it here, FIO to DIR is 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so that's also done. So we don't need any of this. And we don't need any of this timer one here. And here we are reading from channel one. So this should be changed to channel one. Okay, so basically only these many difference and we are done. Okay, so our System is like it has two temperature sensors connected to the two channels of the ADC. And whenever we get an interrupt, first we check whether it is due to first temperature sensor. If it is due to first temperature sensor, we'll do the conversion and we'll send the temperature value to port one LED. Uh, then we will check whether the conversion on channel two is also over. In that case, yeah, we'll do a conversion on channel two and send it to port 2. So it is possible only channel 1 finish or only channel 2 finish or both channel 1 and 2 finish. All, all the cases are possible and we are covering all of them.
Okay, now let's add this file to our project. We still have this ADC software control here. So add file and we are adding ADC burst here. And let me remove this one. Let's compile. Okay, new line we need. And here we need one more little bracket. Okay. Now everything looks fine. Uh, let's simulate. And in this case, I'm sending one of the outputs to port 1 and the other one to port 2. So let's bring port 1 and port 2 here. Peripheral. Okay, port 1 and peripherals. Port 2. On port 2, you are not seeing 31 pins because not all 31 bits of the pin registers, they are wired out. Only 14 uh, registers are connected to external pins. That's why we are seeing only this much. Okay, so let's run step by step first time. So we'll start from here itself. So if I your two direction got configured, are you one? Direction you won't see here because I added the first interface and he's doing it on slow interface But the pin values will definitely reflect the final value Okay, so we enable the interrupt to control register. We wrote it now You can see cell became three that means two channels are enabled and burst is also configured and Let's run it And here you can see the done for channel zero became high and we send that value of course we didn't give any value so it will be zero now we check for the other done and actually the other done also got set and you can see the or run bit is also getting set okay so what is happening is while we are doing this conversion and sending it to the io pin and roll the adc has finished a new conversion and we didn't read it on time that is why the or run bit is getting set but otherwise our logic looks all fine so let's run everything together and uh, let me give channel one a voltage of one and you can see yeah this is the corresponding temperature and on channel one also let me give one now and you can see there also it got set so if i give 1.5 here uh, it will immediately reflect here same way if i give three here it will get to reflect here okay so this is how the burst mode happens where you can enable more than one channel at the same time thank you